Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler, who oversees the salmon program here at Game and Fish. Russ, give our viewers a little bit of background on salmon in North Dakota. Okay, the, the current salmon we have in Lake Skokwee right now are Chinook salmon or King salmon. Uh, they were first put in the lake in 1976. Uh, they were put in the lake to utilize the cold water, deep water that's in the lake that not many other species uh, utilize. Um, and also uh, rainbow smelt were stocked in the lake as a forage and uh, that's an excellent forage for salmon to, to grow and live in, in Lake Skakwea. So. Okay, and this is the time of year when anglers start targeting salmon. Yeah, generally uh, the, the best month to catch salmon uh, in the summertime with the downriggers and stuff is in August. Um, they'll start biting in July. Um, some years it's kind of slow in July. This year it, it's actually starting to pick up earlier than it has in the last few years. So they are catching some salmon already. Okay, and there's some special equipment you need when salmon fishing. Yeah, yeah. Early in the summer, uh, you're going to need a boat and some downrigger so you can get down to that 60, 80, 100 foot range. Um, and then they're, they're pulling flashers and, and squids or needlefish to catch the salmon this time of year. Come mid September, uh, the fish move, uh, the salmon move shallow, and then you can start catching them offshore with crankbaits or under bobbers with worms or egg sacs and stuff like that. All the way through the middle end of October, you can you can do that from shore then. Okay, every fall, typically in October, uh, game and fish along with the hatchery, you guys go out and, and collect eggs, and the hatchery raises salmon throughout the, the winter. How many fish did we uh, stock this spring? This spring we actually stocked uh, 550,000 or about 550,000, which is about 150,000 more than we have been stocking the past few years. Um, that was done because the hatchery had some extra space that they weren't using this year, so we, we took advantage of that and stocked a few more fish. Those fish, even though we stocked more this year, we won't actually start seeing those fish in the, in the fishery until next year. This year, Russ, we have high water again. How does that affect salmon fishing? Well, one would think with uh, a high water, you're going to have more cold water habitat, and that should make salmon fishing better. It almost seems like it doesn't because there's there's more space for them salmon to spread out. So they're they're you know they're clear to Newtown. There's salmon in the lake right now, um, so it's it's harder to you know get them concentrated and, and then catch more. Plus, it seems like when we have the higher lake levels, we have higher releases, and we're losing more salmon through the dam into the tail race. Um, and that's actually been a pretty decent fishery this spring for both trout and salmon down there. Speaking of the tail race, Russ, do we stock salmon down in the tail race? Uh, we stocked them in the past, and we, we've done it for several years. And the, that's where the, the tagging has showed us that the fish we stock in the tail race, they just kind of disappear. We don't see them again. The anglers don't really see them. The South Dakota doesn't see them in their spawn. So the salmon that are caught in the tail race, the vast majority of them were stocked in Lake Sakakawea and at some point went through the dam. And those are the fish that anglers are catching down there. And the ones that we get returning to the spawn down there are from fish that were stocked in Lake Sakakawea. Okay, and you said a little bit, a little bit ago that smelt is basically salmon's forage. How is the smelt population yeah. holding up? Right now, the smelt population is good in Lake Skakawea. Um, we'll do another survey, it's called a hydroacoustic survey. We do that in the new moon phase in around August every year. So we'll be doing that at the end of August this year to, to uh, check on the smelt again and see how they're doing. Okay, explain your salmon tagging program. Okay, every year we, uh, we take a handful of the salmon that we stock and we do that to get an idea of, you know, how the salmon are growing um, and uh, how old they are when they're returning. Um, and we look at basically where we've stocked them and the size we stocked them and try and get a figure out what's best to return for the anglers and for us at the spawn. Okay. So if, if you catch a tag salmon, uh, the adipose fin, which is the, the fleshy fin towards the tail of the salmon, that'll be cut off and removed. And if you, you catch a salmon like that, you can cut the head off and turn it into the gas station in Pick City or the one in Riverdale or drop it off at the Game and Fish office in Riverdale or at the headquarters in Bismarck. And we'll get those heads and dig the tags out and I'll send you a letter sometime in the following spring where your fish was stocked and how big it was. So salmon fishing should be pretty good this year? Um, I quit making predictions a few years ago because every time I would make one it would turn out wrong. Um, there are definitely salmon in the lake. Um, we kind of utilize the, the one-year-old male returns the previous year to see how, to see how that stocking did. Um, and for the last several years, the, the one-year-olds at that time have showed up in good numbers, so we should have three fairly decent year classes out there. The three-year-old numbers are going to be a little lower because that was a smaller stocking, but 
there should be decent salmon numbers out there this uh, this year for fishermen to catch. A lot of good information, Russ. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on salmon fishing in North Dakota, visit the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.